welcome to the Moonshots Podcast. It's episode 203. I'm your co-host, Mike Parsons, and as always, I'm joined by Mark Pearson Freeland. Good morning, Mark. Hey, good morning, Mike. This is once again another exciting deep dive into our series all about achieving your goals today, isn't it? Not only is it about goals, I think the last two shows have been so turbocharged with OKRs, Mark. I just imagine thousands of moonshotters hitting objectives, realizing their results. I mean, you could not get more turbocharged with goal setting than the last two shows of the Moonshot Podcast. But the question, Mark, today is where are we going? How are we continuing this blast through achieving your goals? Based on the foundation that we have learned in the series so far today, listeners and subscribers, we are digging into Michael D. Watkins's The First 90 Days. Mike, this is a pretty uh, relevant book for our series. And I think the surprise that we're going to reveal as we go through, and I'm not going to give away all the spoilers quite yet, (laughs) but there's a specific angle that I believe comes to life as we think about our goal or our achieving goals as a, as a, an objective, let's say the first 90 days from Watkins is a really practical guide full of strategies that can help you and I and all of us, all of our members and subscribers and listeners lean into new roles, new challenges, new transitions that happen every day and become that little bit better. These are proven strategies from Watkins that help us and all of us uh, can conquer and review challenges that we might run into wherever you are in your career and start to proactively go out and address them and be that best version of ourselves. I mean, Mike, have I already made the case for this book? I think you're doing a pretty good job. I would say that these big uh, kickoffs for something new for each of us is something where we can really relate to the need to like, oh, geez, I really got to come in, get the job done. And this book, whilst originally designed to helping you for the first 90 days, I think what you're setting up, Mark, is it may be able to help you for far beyond those 90 days. And there's so much in the show ahead of us. In fact, Michael D. Watkins has these kind of 10 ideas that are going to transform the way you get results for yourself and for your team. And whilst traditionally set amongst that hey, you're in a new gig, you've got 90 days to make impact. I think there's a bigger story here, uh, including not only how you work on yourself, but in particular, how you get to understand the organization and the team that you're in and how you even get the people in that to accelerate and to get the job done, to get all the boats sailing in the same direction. It sounds kind of easy and, and quite elegant, but we all know once you actually start getting into things, that's when the reality hits. You know that moment, Mark, when mm. you're like, uh-oh, this <laughs> is going to be hard. <laughs> yeah. this, is gonna, this isn't as easy as I thought it was going to be, you know? Yeah, exactly. No amount of preparation can necessarily get you ready until you actually get into the, uh, let's say, the war zone. When you step into the arena, as, as Brené Brown would say, I mean, it reminds me of driving a car, Mike. You know, you can practice, you can read your theory, but until you're behind the wheel by yourself, once you pass your test, that's when you really learn the ins and outs, the dimensions, the, the way of dealing with other people on the road. Totally. And totally. I think this like, entire series is getting us ready for that, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And it, and it really touches on a theme that Patrick Lencioni has in Five Dysfunctions of a Team, which is work and life is a team sport. And mm. so you've got to be the best version of yourself to help others um, sail in the right direction. So all of that is ahead of us today on the show, Mike. So get ready, listeners and members. This first 90-day adventure is going to help you unleash your goals and your results. So let's get stuck into it, Mark. Um, where do you want to kick off? Well, I want to kick off with a little bit of an adventure, and I want to hear from the author, Michael D. Watkins himself, making the case that transitions are everywhere. So I think in a time of economic turmoil, we probably all feel like we're in a time of transition, whether or not our job title has actually changed. Is there is every transition unique, or are there some overarching themes that mark every transition? 
Well, first of all, I think you're right. The, the current economic situation has really generated an almost continuous set of transitions for people. So even if they're not taking a brand new job, their job responsibilities are, are really changing in pretty fundamental ways. So there's not just the normal kinds of transitions going on right now, promotions, joining new companies. There's a lot of what I call hidden transitions, you know, downsizing, restructuring, jobs being, being altered and so on. And it's certainly, you know, a challenging time. In terms of sort of general principles for making successful transitions, um, when I wrote the previous book, The First 90 Days, I sort of laid out a set of principles for how to make a successful transition into a new leadership role. Looking at crucial things like how do you learn about a new organization or a new role? How do you secure early wins? How do you create alliances? In the new book, I'm really sort of looking much more deeply at certain classic kinds of transitions that people go through. And what I found as I was doing this was really there are two core components that um, you need to pay attention to. One is, what's the personal adaptive challenge you're going through? What does this mean for you personally in terms of the new competencies or the new skills or the new attitudes that you need in order to really step up to the role? And on the other side, there's, this, there's what I think of as the organizational change challenge. What do you need to do with this organization? What's the objective? What kind of transformation effort do you, do you need to... Um, undertake. And I think that as long as leaders get those two challenges really clear in their minds, what do I need to do to myself and what do I need to do to the organization, that just provides a tremendous amount of clarity as you, you begin to plan how to move forward. Jay-Z's asking some pretty fundamental questions there of leadership, isn't he? Mm. By, by kind of saying, as you go to transform a team or an organization, perhaps the first place to start is how will you transform yourself? Mm. And I think that's where we all fall down, isn't it, Mark? We often think, oh, we've got to change the environment around us. And in, in our zest, in our zeal, mm. maybe we forget that maybe we need to change and, and grow as well. Well, I look, I think this is a topic that has, we've, we've visited a few times on the Moonshot show. And I believe it's a big, big call out that we not only are running into a few times, such as within our entrepreneur series. Do you remember Darren Hardy, the entrepreneur mm. roller coaster, uh, Gerber's e myth? This um, ownership that you have as a leader to get yourself into, you know, A, the right headspace. Uh, be the right attitude uh, towards the business, but also see actually putting in the effort to make that organization work. You know, it all kind of needs to build from a foundation of being a, maybe not solid, but at least improving leader who's leaning into, you know, growth mindset, who's challenging themselves with, you know, maybe, um, multitasking, but also people management, getting the right people on the bus, like you were saying earlier. I think this is a, a theme that keeps on coming back, isn't it? This idea of you as an individual, a house that you need to get in order before you can go out and be your best self at work as a leader, as a manager of people. Yeah. The, the it's, it's this constant, uh, I would say does uh, need or requirement to be self-aware if you're trying to create change or if you're moving a team through a, a transition, you you can't make it solely and exclusive. It's all about them. I've just got to fix them, improve them. I think what Michael D. Watkins is setting up for us here is that you know transition is not only constant, but it's all around us. It's all the stakeholders, mm. all the constituents in that picture have to embrace some level of change. And I think if I reflect on some of the uh, insights that I'm having as we're talking about this, perhaps where I could have had more impact is where I was prepared to take on as much change as the organization. What do you think? Mm, I think that's an interesting build, isn't it? I think the, not to get too um, abstract, but I wonder whether there is a case for the business adapting to individuals as they start as they're going through transitions, much like an individual has to be adapting to the business. So I think what we learned with Christina Woodkey and even John Doerr, when we're talking about a business choosing the right uh, objectives, as well as, you know, teams identifying key results and so on. I think there's a synergy that happens between the personal level as well as the organizational mm. one. 
And I think Watkins is, again, helping us make a bridge from the OKR world (laughs) and the ecosystem that we've traveled within so far. And now we're starting to bridge into this quite practical uh, mindset change, which is away from, right, let's all make sure we're on that same page and into how are we actually going to go out and, you know, A, uh, become successful in a new role or at least a new transition, as Watkins puts it, continuous transitions are around us Mm. all the time. But I think there's also a case here that says we can learn something that will help us throughout the entire, let's say, life cycle of our career, of our job. Maybe even at home, we can utilize some of these tools that we're going to learn in the rest of the show to help us become that best version or high impact version of ourselves when we're in a leadership position. Maybe it's just a teamwork situation, or maybe it's something else. Yeah. And I think what's going to pay off this insight that transitions are are everywhere. And I think the emphasis might be for everyone, yourself included as a leader, um, we're going to go and unpack sort of the five key questions you should ask when you take a new role. We're going to look at some key moments that you're going to have, uh, whether it's uh, that self assessment, that self-awareness, or whether it's getting those early wins on the board, but also seeing transition as a much more greater constant in in life at work. But before we do that, I'll tell you who's always transitioning to good things in life, and that's Moonshot's members, Mark. I know. I, I couldn't have said it better myself, Mike. Our members and our family just keep on growing, isn't it? These are individuals who help us keep the lights on as well as get a a daily, maybe minute by minute dose of good powered karma. So please welcome all of our Patreon members, Bob, John, Terry, Ken, Dietmar, Marjan and Connor, Rodrigo, Yasmin, Lisa and Sid, Mr. Bonjour, Paul, Berg and Kalman, David and Joe, Crystal and Evo, Christian, Hurricane Brain, Samuela, Kelly and Barbara, Andre, Matthew, Eric and Abby, Jose, Joshua, Chris and Kobe, Deborah, Lasse, Steve and Craig, Lauren, Javier, Daniel and Andrew, Rave, Evert, Karen and Raul, as well as our brand new members, PJ and Nikuara. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being part of the Moonshots members. Yeah, thank you so much for your support. That one cup of coffee a month helps us pay the bills, produce Uh, all of the goodness that's coming up. And we are really uh, giving back that uh, lunar powered good karma to each and every one of our members. Thank you for your support. And if you're listening right now and you're thinking, hey, Mark and Mike, they need a little nudge. They need a little bit of good karma themselves. Jump on to moonshots.io, hit the members button, and you can use the cool tech from the folks at Patreon. You can become a member and you get access to our other podcast, which is the Moonshots Master Series, which is a whole podcast completely separate that we produce for our members only. So head over to moonshots.io. Now, whilst you are entertaining the riches that come from being a member of the Moonshots podcast, we can also ask that you are, are you in a transition? Are you getting ready to start a new challenge? And if you are, then there are five key questions that you should be thinking about. The actions you take in the first few months in a new job will have a major impact on your overall success or failure. Transitions into new roles are exciting times. You have an opportunity to reshape an organization, take on new challenges, and to learn and grow. At the same time, there are periods of great vulnerability. You're trying to climb a learning curve, operate in the context of a new, complex organizational environment, and there's lots of ways you can go wrong. The biggest challenge new leaders face is staying focused. So it helps to have a key set of orienting questions that you ask yourself before you start the role and keep asking yourself as you move forward. How will you create value? What are you there to do? What's your mandate? What do key stakeholders expect of you? And over what time period and how will your progress be measured? Every organization has a culture, a set of norms of behavior that people are expected to operate within. The level at which you're leading will also have an impact on people's expectations of how you will show up. Do you understand 
who are the key stakeholders? Are you focused on building the right relationships and even more important, the right alliances to get the support you need to get things done? What are some areas that you can focus on where you can get some early improvement and create a sense of momentum? You may be able to get off to a great start, but it's highly likely that what got you here and won you the role is not the full set of skills and capabilities you're gonna need to be fully effective. Start asking yourself those five questions during the recruiting process and keep asking them as you move through the first critical months in your new role. Mike, that is a treasure trove <laughs> from Watkins there, isn't it? We Ooh. could just do the show on those questions <laughs> yeah. now if you want, Mark. We totally could. We totally could. I think for me, as I'm reflecting on a lot of the uh, advice and points of view that Watkins is you know, providing to us in that clip, the big one for me is really this idea around how you're creating value. You know, you go through the process, uh, obviously in the situation Michael's breaking down, it's a, it's a hire. So you are literally within that first 90 days yes, of yeah. your job. And I love this uh, reflection that he's, he's helping us, you know, keep in mind. And I think it's somewhat connected with our previous shows on achieving your goals as well. This idea of what value are you bringing? The value mm. of creating the alliances and the relationships, how you turning up each day, what, um, are you demonstrating or providing? How are you inspiring perhaps mm. with those people around you? And for me, as I think about the times when, you know, perhaps I've either taken on a new adventure at work or whether it's a new job entirely, building that momentum, building the cadence to demonstrate that I'm trying to work quite hard, that I'm trying to create value, maybe being indisposable is always something that's kind of in my mind. It's something that I've, I've tried to uh, hold myself accountable to. And it's interesting for me to hear that this is in uh, indeed something that even Watkins is calling out. What, what, what are the insights that you're taking away straight away, Mike, from, from that clip from Watkins? Well, I think, um, you know, asking yourself, how will you show up mm. um, is an interesting question because obviously there, there are those questions of you know, what kind of value are you going to bring and so forth. But I, I always think things get interesting when you, when you ask how will you, not mm. what will you, but how will you, really in any sort of context. And I think it because it kind of, it starts to be a bit more provocative of like, what will be the style and the approach by which you're going to get the job done? Mm. Are you going to be a listener? Are you going to be a collaborator? Um, these sorts of questions I find are really powerful in getting into the finer points of how you might lead, how you might support others, how you w how you will actually get the the, the value um, achieved through this role. And I think you know. What's so powerful about the the ninety ideas ninety days construct is that it's this really clear start um, of a, a journey and how if you really focus on that um, there's so it's such an important time it's almost like if you if you haven't really got in the momentum and as a result if you haven't got some runs on the board and built some trust you're going to find yourself in a year's time going geez, what have I really done? And I yeah. think that's our biggest fear, isn't it? That we somehow are just stuck in no man's land, I guess is mm. a way of describing it. We didn't get that traction. We haven't been able to make the, the, the impact in the team or the organization. And I think we all in the end want to get to the end of a day, a week, a year, and feel like we've had a meaningful contribution, don't we? And I think our biggest fear is that we're just not having that impact. Yeah, I, I would say that that is a great extension to something that we find ourselves encountering a lot on the Moonshot Show, isn't it? This idea of legacy. Am yes. I spending the time I do have on the right things? Have I wasted my time? Am I maximizing it enough? Am I, uh, <laughs> you know, waking up at 5 a.m. like Robin Sharma to read a book, exercise, and journal? Am I trying to be that best version of myself? And 
although we don't necessarily all need to wake up at 5 a.m. to do that, I think the extension that you're building up there, Mike, is, is spot on, which is I'm in a new job. Maybe I'm in a new role. Maybe I'm still in the same business, but something's changed. Continuous transitions. Am I still holding myself uh, accountable in the right level so that by the end of a year, six months, a week, I can look back and say, you know what? I was pretty, I was on fire then. I was doing some pretty good work. I was focused and I'm really pleased with where I got to. I think at the end of the day, we're our, uh, sometimes we are our toughest judge. So I think it's a great reminder here that if you can get that uh, accountability and focus right, you're yourself going to feel more confident in the fact that you've delivered the uh, targets that you set yourself out. Yeah. And I, and I think it goes beyond the confidence of like keeping your job or anything like that. I think it kind of really speaks to that at any point in reflection, you feel like the work that you're doing matters in some way, that it helps in some way that you can feel satisfied in your contribution, proud of your effort. Like it's, to me, it's, Everything we've been doing, uh, thinking about here with the first 90 days, but also throughout the OKRs, it's so much more than just like a job or a bonus. Mm. To me, this is about like, man, I got some great stuff done. People appreciated it. I feel good about it. They feel good about it. This is something I want to continue doing. I think we all, we all strive for that, um, sense of, meaning in our work or mm. at least fulfillment and satisfaction. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think this was the the big takeaway that I had from Christina Woodkey's Radical Focus as well. This idea of uh, feeling happy and confident, happy being a, a somewhat loaded word, I suppose, but happy and confident with my abilities stems from being able to take ownership and uh, empowerment, I suppose. And I think you're, you're totally right. When you are utilizing frameworks, tools of which, you know, Michael D. Watkins' uh, book on the first 90 days is just one in an arsenal of things that can help you feel more confident in the delivery that you're providing to the business, maybe as an individual or as a team, suddenly you're going to look back and think that you've made more of a positive difference that therefore is going to lead you to feeling accomplished, uh, confident, as well as generally maybe right. a better colleague or leader. Totally, totally. So that's, that's where we, you know, we kind of get into this idea that um, transitions aren't only and exclusively when you start a new job in a new company. Um, it feels like, like I'm always, I, I kind of feel like every quarter is like some new transition, a new chapter. And in fact, I find myself, Mark, I kind of enjoy almost storybooking mm. my work. And for example, you know, I just got back from, from a holiday. So I feel like I'm kind of framing a new chapter for the year that will probably get me uh, pretty much to the end of the year. And I'm trying to reboot and refresh like it's a brand new transition. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. And I'm, I'm very much in the same position. I think a lot of us probably are, isn't it? It's great to see that uh, transition in play. But I think what's interesting, Mike, is we're, you know, delving into these first 90 days and we're understanding that it isn't just around the initial uh, potential job that you've just started and the fact that these transitions are everywhere. We've got some great tips coming up now from expert program management, who breaks down for us, as well as for all of our listeners, one of the big tips that Michael has, and this is about building early momentum. So let's hear from expert program management, helping you and I and our listeners secure early wins. In the first 90 days, a key goal is to secure personal credibility and to build momentum under your leadership. Now, early wins boost your credibility. They get people motivated and they create value for the organization. But there are a few mistakes new leaders can make when trying to secure early wins. And these are failing to focus. And basically that means, you know, you're trying to do too much. You're not focused, not taking the business situation into account, 
So this is about keeping in mind that a win will look very different from one business to another. Not adjusting to corporate culture, which is similar, you know, don't bring your existing ideas of a win with you, but really understand what a win means to your new organization. Uh, Same with the next point, failing to get wins that matter to your boss. And focusing on the what and not the how. And this means that it's not simply about achieving the results. You have to think about how you achieve them as well. So maybe you achieve the results, but if you've alienated people in the process, then that's going to make it very hard to kind of sustain that success and keep building on those results. Wow, we're getting into the the, the real tribalism of of work <laughs> here, aren't we? I mean, in the end, we're just all these tribes of humans running around. It's so simple about wins for you, wins for your boss. I mean, and it, it might sound a little Machiavellian, but the truth is we are social animals. It's all about uh, fear, belonging, success, ego. These are all primary drivers. And particularly when we start a new transition, it's so critical to be aware of these things, isn't it? Uh, it absolutely is. I think the the biggest takeaway that I'm you know, reflecting on from that clip we just heard was actually the idea of bringing existing um, decisions or points of view or perceptions. So specifically in the clip we heard, uh, bringing uh, existing ideas of what a win looks like and bring it to a new business or a new situation without adapting without considering who the audience is, who your customers are, what your boss or your business is trying to achieve. And I think this is a really important call out that for me, whenever I've gone into maybe a new challenge, let's say, let's, let's say it's not a new job at this point. It's a transition that's happened internally. Maybe I've moved teams or maybe I've, I've got a new project that's come up that I've never really done before. Maybe it's something very technical. So there's going to be a, a sharp learning curve. Mm. The transition here that I want to call out from that previous clip is the fact that I'm going to bring my my pre-existing experience into this new situation. So if it's something very technical, something that maybe I haven't done before, I might uh, naturally gravitate towards a proven strategy or technique that I've used before. Maybe Mm -hmm. it's creating uh, a strong relationship with somebody. Maybe it's being uh, a particular character, whatever it might be or putting in a a, a specific framework that I've used that maybe the team hasn't. I think the call out here is be aware of who the audience are, be aware of who the customers and the team and the colleagues and the boss are in order to help you make that right decision. And that's certainly something that I've probably been guilty of in the past, Mike, you know, bringing my own point of view over what works into a situation. It's kind of like bringing a, a square and trying to force it into a circle peg, (laughs) you know, it doesn't quite fit no matter how hard you push it. You have to be adaptable. Yeah. Well, you see this that, you know, sometimes uh, leaders of some companies get poached to go to other companies and then don't have the same level of success. Exactly. And often there are that they've tried to employ exactly the same tactics they used at uh, the previous company, but now they're operating in a different system. Uh, there's a different culture. People respond in different ways. And uh, I think what what I take out of this is um, this idea of securing early wins, it's almost a deeper uh, challenge, which is to really observe and understand your new working environment and to rather than, you know, I think this is really important, rather than trying to like solve everything really quickly Mm. actually get some wins. They may actually be small wins. I get the sense here that if you're really listening to an organization and observing it, you understand what matters to them, but you're actually in a position to maybe make some small changes that have a big effect. And I think it comes back to almost in continuously comes back to this awareness level that we need to have when we're in a new transition, right? Mm, this awareness of the people that are around you 
and the awareness of how you're uh, going to, you know, keep yourself accountable, right? So I think this next clip, Mike, that we have is again from expert program management, who's going to help us when we get into those type of situations where we need to reflect on, you know, how we, how we holding ourselves and are we on the right track? So let's hear now from expert program management, talk to us about self-assessment. It's really important to keep your balance through the first 90 days while you're trying to do so much. And this section is all about regularly performing a self-assessment to ensure you're not falling into a personal trap at work. So including things like going off in all directions, it's not going to be possible to focus others if you can't focus yourself. Undefended boundaries. Now, if you don't define your boundaries, what you are prepared to do and are not prepared to do, then people are going to take whatever you have to give. Brittleness. Now, this means don't overcommit to a course of action so that you can't change your mind if things start to go badly. Isolation. To be effective, you have to be connected to people who can make action happen. Bias judgment. So, for example, confirmation bias, whereby you focus only on factors that confirm your beliefs or maybe work avoidance. And that's where you avoid taking the bull by the horns and making those difficult decisions. And in turn, that makes, you know, tough problems tougher. And finally, going over the top, basically working too hard and being too stressed. So you go beyond peak performance and you start to go downhill and move towards burnout. So those are the traps. But how do you avoid them? Well, you can adopt success strategies, and that's the bunch of strategies we've already discussed today. You can enforce personal disciplines, and that means things like, you know, devoting time weekly to planning, to a planning and evaluation cycle. Try not to make spur of the moment commitments that you might later regret. Uh, Set aside time for actually doing hard work because it's so easy to get distracted day to day with emails and people knocking on your door. Um, It means things like if you find yourself getting too caught up in the emotional side of difficult decisions. Take time out to look at the big picture. And finally, it means, you know, if you find yourself alienating people, even though you have really great ideas that you want to get implemented, then, you know, make some time and create a plan to how you're going to go about influencing people. And the final point is it's important to build your support systems. Um, And this means, you know, stabilizing everything at home, Because, you know, it's a fundamental rule of warfare not to fight battles on too many fronts. And it also means, you know, thinking about how you're going to build your advice and counsel network. Wow, this is turning into a bit of an MBA masterclass. <laughs> um, there's so much to cover here. I think one th- one of the things I wanted to do for our listeners is, Mark, you and I actually run through the quickly these 10 strategies that are at the core of the First 90 Days book. And what I thought is we could actually just kind of uh, read them out and um, comment on them a little bit. Um, to kind of set this scene. So when in doubt, listeners and members, if you are going through a transition, if you are leading something new, a new initiative project, or whether it might even be a new job, here are the big 10. All right, I'll start it off. This is what Michael D. Watkins recommends in his very popular book, The First 90 Days. Number one, know what motivates you. Now, I like this one, Mark, because I think for me, it's always very important to be spending some time doing stuff that I really enjoy doing. And it makes it easier for me to do the stuff I don't like so much (laughs) (laughs) because I know I'm doing some of the good stuff. All right. That's number one. What's number two? I like that, but I'm going to raise you, Mike, with strategy number two, which is tailor your strategy. Very similar and building on some of the clips we've just heard, which I really like specifically around choose the strategy that's right for the target you have in mind. Yes. Don't use old tricks from an old company. Exactly. Don't just copy and paste that can get you into some trouble, right? That's right. That's right. Now, uh, interesting thing is that he talks about negotiate success as strategy three. For me, that's all about 
um, mutually agreeing expectations so that folks don't think you're going to solve everything in the first 90 days. Mm. And Mm -hmm. I think that's really important, particularly if you're joining a team that has a a big challenge or perhaps there's just a big stinky problem that really needs to get fixed. Yeah. Um, Maybe you can't solve everything uh, in the first 90 days to negotiate that success. All right. That's strategy number three. Expectation management, I think is that that's a good one. And that builds on to strategy number four, which is speed up your learning like we were hearing from Michael D. Watkins earlier in the show, getting on board as quickly as you can is what matters. You want to feel confident and happy in the situation that you are with, with your team. And I think for me, Mike, uh, when it comes to speeding up your learning, when I've had to adapt, it's quite literally turning off distractions. Either close your laptop or turn on Do Not Disturb. Put in headphones if you need to be quiet and just apply yourself. Do that deep work in order to try and a level up, let's say, the learning that you need to go and do. Yeah, yeah. Create spray, uh, space upstairs. Space, right? Exactly. Like, um, don't put yourself behind the eight ball just because you haven't allocated learning time or you're not getting prepared enough prior to to meetings, for example. Exactly. Okay, that's strategy number four. Number five, clinch early victories. I think uh, the mm. big one, the big takeout on strategy five here, clinching early victories, is they don't always need to be big, do they, Mark? Well, that's it. I think uh, like we were hearing from expert program management, if you can get a good momentum and you can just tick something off the list, not only is it good for you at a business or in a new role to demonstrate that you understand what it is that's tasked, but I mean, Mike, whenever something, whenever you and I have had a good win, what do we go and do? We take a moment, we yeah. celebrate, we feel good. Yeah. And that's something that you really want to try and to get right, isn't it? So even if it's a small little victory, it just still counts. Likewise, Mike, what else counts is strategy number six with get alignment. How many times have we struggled with work in the past when we know we're not necessarily on the same page as a client, a partner, a colleague, whatever it is. That uncertainty that comes without an alignment is so unpleasant. So just taking the time to train or at least discuss how you're going to stay aligned with your colleagues Mm. or your boss or your partner in business that then re- reduces and relieves any of that anxiety and stress that hangs around when you're not quite certain. Yeah, it's it's very much getting people on the same page because strategy number seven is build your team. This thing is a team sport. Life is a team sport. The quicker that we embrace that and the more often we remind ourselves that it's all about bringing people together around achieving a vision that they can all share uh, and be proud of. That one's a big one. And um, we ain't done. We got three more, yeah. but let's race through these strategies for transition acceleration. Well, building upon strategy number uh, seven, which was build your team, we're now on strategy number eight with build alliances. And I think this idea is a great demonstration of that personal success strategy that we heard in the previous clip. If you are going to align yourself and create a relationship with individuals, that's going to help you make an impact because you can't just join a new role and make a difference by sending one email. You're going to have to create a relationship or an alliance with the people who go out and make that change. Exactly. Marketing or, or finance, whatever it might be, you need to go and work with those individuals. And frankly, Mike, whenever I've made alliances, I feel pretty happy at work anyway. <laughs> so course. I think it's a good one. Of course. And it doesn't have to be like Game of Thrones kind of alliances. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's get along here. And <laughs> if you want to you know, connect with others, you need to connect with yourself. And that's strategy number nine, manage yourself, know yourself because that's the only way you can go out and be the best version of yourself. And Mark, bring it home for strategy number 10 from Michael D. Watkins. Strategy number 10, accelerate everyone. You might be the first person, or at least in your mindset, you might be the only person who's going through a bit of a change. But remember, there are people around you that are also adapting to you being present. And I love this idea where if you are stepping into a new role or you're transitioning into something that's a little bit different than you what you've experienced by helping get everybody onto the, your wavelength as well as you catch up to them is a way of guaranteeing everybody's on the same page. Exactly. And whether you're doing that in a brand new job or whether you're just bringing a sense of renewal to your current work, it doesn't matter. Those 10 strategies will help you 
for the first 90 days. And now as we close out with Michael Watkins, maybe it's the next 90 days. There have been a number of executives who have been going through the workshop. They're not in a transition. One of the really unexpected benefits we found is they're coming up to me saying, oh my gosh, this is my next 90 days. So what I found is whether it's the first 90 days or their next 90 days, the same concepts and principles apply. Could you speak more to that? So the workshop is really about understanding where you are and planning for going forward. That's most valuable often when you're in transition, but it can be valuable anytime, right? The discipline of taking stock of where you are, right? Understanding the key features of the challenges you're facing, thinking about what you need to learn, because we need to learn these days at every point in time, and putting together a plan for the next 90 days, that can be an incredibly productive thing to do. I've had leaders go through the first 90 days program and adopt it as a methodology for every 90 days. They, they go forward and do this sort of work. As the speed of change is accelerated, you can argue that senior leaders are basically in transition in some form or another almost always, right? And if that's the case, then the discipline of understanding, diagnosing, learning, planning, connecting, you know, propelling things forward, that can be a very useful di discipline wherever you are uh, in, in terms of timing in your role. I think that's it, Mike. We've made the case. Michael D. Watkins bringing it home for us, calling out the fact that even though you might not necessarily be looking at your LinkedIn or your CV, knowing that you're about to start a brand new role, the truth is continuous transitions are all around us. So it pays dividends for us to be disciplined, to reflect on where we are and to plan what we're going to go and do next. Yeah. And uh, if you're interested in those uh, 90 strategies that we read out, you can get them all at our show notes, which are available at moonshots.io. Amongst many other goodies, full transcripts of the shows, our back catalog, um, links to literally everything we talk about on the show. It's all at moonshots.io. I owe. So Mark, just when everybody thought, oh, Mike and Mark, they're just going to talk about <laughs> the 90 days, we ended up turning the 90 days into a lifetime of work. <laughs> Whoops. Um, uh, look, I'm really interested to know, we talked about the 10 strategies. Is there one of those that is saying, Mark, embrace me, learn mm. more about me? Which one of those do you think could be very effective for you in the coming week at work? You know what? I think the building alliances is, is something that really is so valuable that I think we touch upon occasionally, but we probably don't spend enough time really calling out because of its personal benefit. So building relationships and alliances whereby you're not only going to be happier with your day job, but also you might be more productive because you are working with, collaborating with, or at least discussing work with the people who can go out and make that change. And fundamentally making change or making it happen is a thing that sometimes you feel pretty insecure about when you're in a new role. So for me, build alliances, strategy number eight is the big call out for me. What about you, Mike? Oh man, I'm looking at them. <laughs> They're good, aren't they? Uh, I'm looking at them. I think Accelerate Everyone was really mm. interesting because I think sometimes we can make the mistake of charging into something and not taking everyone with us. Right? Yes. And I've true. been guilty of that. So I think it's a very good reminder. And I just like the idea that, you know, it's not just the first 90 days. There's this sort of this permanent sense of renewal of iterations mm. of chapters in our working lives. I really like that. Don't you? I like that a lot. Yeah. I like that a lot. It's a great call out. All right. Well, thank you to you, Mark, and thank you to our members and our listeners. Here we are today on show 203 of the Moonshots podcast, where we are diving into the work, The First 90 Days by Michael D. Watkins. And boy, did it have a lot to teach us. Transitions are everywhere. There is, in fact, five fundamental questions you should ask whenever you start a new role. And some great strategies to incorporate are getting those early wins, getting the self-assessment, build your team, negotiate the success. Do all of these things in your first 90 days. And you know what? 
you'll be ready to do even better in the next 90 days. And that's really what it's all about here at the Moonshots Podcast is we learn out loud. We want to improve the next 90 days so that we can be the very best version of ourselves. All right, that's a wrap.